Hi, and welcome to Helen Ponton's VA Disability Blog. Today we're going to be talking about sleep apnea and hypertension. What's the link between the two? Can you get benefits for these conditions? Can you get secondary benefits? Um, why do veterans get these conditions more than civilians? So we hope you'll join us to go over that information and so much more. Hi, and welcome back to Helen Ponton's VA Disability Blog. I'm Natalia Joffrey, the company COO. And I'm attorney Allison Reddick. And as promised, we're going to be talking about obstructive sleep apnea today and hypertension. Um, and Ali, you uh, are becoming somewhat of an expert in this field because I know we've talked about these conditions before and we had promised we'd come back and go into um, a little bit more detail regarding these um, so let's talk about the link between these two. Um, and I guess maybe first tell us a little bit what obstructive sleep apnea is. Okay, so basically what obstructive sleep apnea is, is it's a sleep disorder in which your breathing stops temporarily temporarily throughout your sleep cycle. So it causes the muscles in the back of your throat to relax blocking the airway and preventing a person from breathing. Um, mm -hmm. Common symptoms of that are snoring, coughing, gasping for air, obviously stop breathing, excessive sleepiness during the day. Um, and Probably because you're not sleeping well at night, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, so you need to get a sleep study to get diagnosed for that. And then blood pressure, what high blood pressure is, blood pressure is the force the blood exerts on the walls of the blood vessels. Um, so basically it measures how hard your heart is working. So high blood pressure is when that force is consistently too high and your, your heart is working too hard. And the way high blood pressure or blood pressure in general is measured is systolic blood pressure over diastolic blood pressure. So what systolic blood pressure is, it measures the force of the blood against the artery walls when the ventricles are contracting. They're squeezing the blood and pushing it out to the rest of the body. And so um, that's systolic. And then diastolic is the force that occurs um, within the artery walls between the heartbeat. So when the heart relaxes and as the ventricles are refilling with blood. Um, so that's what blood pressure is. So when your heart is working too hard, that pressure against your artery walls is, is exerting too much force, which um, can cause um, additional heart conditions. Um, and so the American Heart Association just recently change the numbers for definitive high blood pressure. Oh. It used to be um, 140 systolic over 80 diastolic, but now they've reduced it to 130 systolic over um, 80 diastolic. So they're, they most likely reduce that because that um, systolic blood pressure the higher it is, or even at that look, that number of 130 is causing damage to the heart. So they want people who have, you know, consistent 130 over 80 to be on some kind of medication to control the right. blood pressure. That was, that was really informative. I have to tell you, you could be on Dr. Oz. That was a great explanation um, with those conditions. So tell us a little bit about why? Why do um, veterans tend to get these conditions? Do they get it? Do they get obstructive sleep apnea and hypertension, would you say more so than civilians? Absolutely. Um, I think both are common conditions, but, and they go undiagnosed frequently, but the fact that veterans are exposed to um, a higher number of risk factors, they have psychological distress, they're always on alert, they don't have great sleep patterns when they're on deployment and such, um, they're exposed to, they have many toxic exposures, whether it be um, burn pits or, um, you know, the, the sand and the Gulf War syndrome and things like that. There are just so many risk factors that veterans have that 
normal civilians aren't exposed to. So what happens is there's been a lot of studies of um, veterans with sleep apnea and so or hypertension and, and they've noticed a relationship between um, hypertension, which is high blood pressure and sleep apnea that, you know, one study showed that 50% of patients with hypertension also have sleep apnea. Oh, wow. um, another study showed that untreated sleep apnea um, individuals with that were 2.6 times more likely to develop heart disease or heart failure. And what leads to heart disease and heart failure, hypertension is one of the risk factors for that. Mm -hmm. So that's why they're um, veterans are, are seen to have higher risk and develop these conditions more frequently than civilians. And so if you have high blood pressure and you notice that you're tired a lot during the day, that you're snoring loudly at night, um, and that you're having some of these anomalies, maybe that's a good indicator that you should talk to your doctor about the possibility of sleep apnea, right? Or, or maybe get tested for the same. Because I know that many times, when you go to the, the the VA and the doctors, they're not going to, you know, go through this sur thorough review and and try to figure out whether you have something else going on. Most of the time, it's it's the veteran that's having to volunteer information and almost advocate for themselves and ask, hey, uh, what about this? What about that? Or is this normal or is it not? And And kind of let them figure it out. Yes. So if you suffered sleep apnea, um, you've been snoring for a long time, for years and years, I've seen veterans for 20, 30 years, um, they've been suffering from this. And then eventually their spouse makes them go get um, get assessed and they actually have sleep apnea um, and say within that time period, they also developed hypertension. So let me explain the connection between the two. Okay. So basically, when you um, have sleep apnea, you stop breathing. And so when you stop breathing, your body doesn't get the amount of oxygen that it needs. So your heart works in overdrive to um, make sure the oxygen is spread throughout the body. So at night, if you have normal breathing, you don't have sleep apnea and such, your blood pressure is supposed to drop because your systems are all, you know, shutting down. They're kind of rewiring and reconfiguring at night. But right. when you have sleep apnea, your blood pressure doesn't drop. You don't see that dip in blood pressure at night. So your work, your heart is working overdrive to make sure um, that your body is getting the oxygen it needs because the sleep apnea is causing your body not to get the amount of oxygen it needs. So that's kind of where the link is between the two of them. And so um, most research is showing that you get the sleep apnea first and then you develop hypertension, but it's hard to show that when this is something that you could be, you could have been suffering from for 20, 30 years. So that's why it's important to have, you know, buddy statements, a statement from your spouse saying, oh yeah, when he was in the service, he was snoring like a train and, you know, I would hear him gasp for air in the night. I had a veteran who got um, buddy statements from his bunkmate saying we would kick him out of the room because his snoring was so bad. Yes. So it's definitely important to get that lay evidence to help with your claims. I loved when you said that the spouse will make them go get evaluated <laughs> yeah. or they'll tell the doctor, hey, you need to check this out. Um, you know, it's so funny to me, what people just after a while, you just assume is normal. You think, oh, I just snore. And it, it, and it starts to escalate. It's like, well, at first my wife started sleeping with earplugs and then she started putting on headphones. And now we're just sleeping in completely separate bedrooms. And now I sleep in the bedroom downstairs and she sleeps in the bedroom upstairs. And it's like the snoring just continues to escalate. And it's like, it's almost a sign for help. Like, this is not normal. And um, I don't think people realize how dangerous undiagnosed sleep apnea is. I yes. mean, think about it. You're stopping breathing. You know, your body isn't getting the amount of oxygen that it needs that affects so many of your body symptoms, of your body systems. Um, there's also evidence to show that diabetes um, 
that sleep apnea can cause diabetes. Um, you know, you can extend from the hypertension. Once you develop that, it can escalate into heart disease and, and things like that. So it's really important to get your sleep apnea treated to avoid developing these secondary conditions. Yeah, for sure. You know, um, sleeping is when the body heals, right? That's yes. why we talk about restorative sleep mm -hmm. because that's when your body's supposed to, in essence, heal itself. And so if you're never sleeping well, it's like your body never has that chance to, to get ahead. Um, so I, I'm glad that you're talking about this. Um, how are these conditions treated normally? So high blood pressure is normally treated through uh, medication. Um, doctors will also recommend potentially changes in your diet or exercise. Um, and then sleep apnea is normally um, treated with a CPAP machine, which basically it's a machine that you wear at night, which constantly um, there's a constant airflow to make sure that that um, the sleep apnea doesn't cause your muscles to close and you have um, stopped breathing during the night. And of course, the million dollar question, right? Can I get benefits? Can I get service connected benefits for either of these conditions or both of them? You can absolutely get service connection for either or both. Um, you just need to show that you were suffering from these conditions, they began in service or something happened in service to cause these conditions, or if you are service connected or for sleep apnea and then develop hypertension, um, getting a doctor's opinion to say, you know, the veteran, he has sleep apnea and because of the sleep apnea and the research shows that this has caused his hypertension. So absolutely, you can get service connection for all of them. Will they do a secondary connection? Like, will they say, well, you know, we'll give it for the sleep apnea and then, or how does that work? Yes. So if you are service connected for sleep apnea and then after you were diagnosed with sleep apnea, or, you know, you could argue that you've been suffering from it for years and it's been undiagnosed since, you know, 20, 30 years, and then you developed um, hypertension, you just have to show that the hypertension developed after the sleep apnea, then you would, um, you would, get secondary service connection for that. So the hypertension is due to the sleep apnea, but for the sleep apnea, this person developed hypertension. Okay. Um, I know you've talked to us about ratings in the past. I know that there's some conditions that have caps on the ratings. So how are these two conditions rated normally, the sleep apnea and hypertension? It's always good to go back through the ratings, of course, because that's how you get your benefits. So for sleep apnea, uh, you can get 100% rating for sleep apnea. It's, it's really hard, though. I rarely see it. Um, you basically have to have chronic respiratory failure or a tracheostomy. Mm -hmm. um, the most common rating we see for sleep apnea is the next is a 50% rating, and that's just basically a doctor has prescribed you a CPAP machine. Um, and then the next rating below that, the lowest is a 30% rating, and that is persistent daytime sleepiness, things like that. Okay. What evidence is helpful when trying to prove these claims? Well, first, let me tell you how hypertension is rated. Oh, sorry. Yeah, let's go back to that. <laughs> so um, the way hypertension is rated, the highest you can get for that is a 60% rating. Mm -hmm. And so for rating high blood pressure hypertension, those terms are interchangeable. I know I keep going back and forth. Um, it's based off of the, the numbers, whether it be the diastolic or the systolic. Systolic is the top number. Diastolic is the bottom number. Um, for a 60% rating, which is the highest, you have to have a diastolic of 130 or more. That's really high. So I had said that it was 80, um, anything higher than 80. So if you're having 130, that's bad. And you're, you're, 
having medication, you prescribe medication, um, that's really uncontrolled um, hypertension. Right. Uh, so I don't really see that rating a lot, but sometimes people have other conditions that affect it and, and that's just the blood pressure that they have. Um, the next rating is 40% and that would be a diastolic of 120. And then 20% rating is a diastolic of 110 or more or a systolic of 200 or more. So I had said uh, systolic was 130. Um, so a systolic of 200 more. That sounds high, but I see a lot of systolics that, that are pretty high. Um, so that's a pretty common rating. And then the lowest would be a 10% rating, which would be a diastolic of 100 or more or a systolic of 160 or more. And obviously we see that one frequently. And I'm assuming that this isn't like you went in and you had this reading one time. Yeah, They're exactly. looking at consistency. Like every time you go in, you have it at 130, 130, 130. You yes. know, not just that one time I yes. had it at 130. Yeah. Absolutely. It has to be consistent over time. Okay. So Allie, what evidence do you recommend um, to prove these claims? Definitely get your service medical records. Um, you may have been treated for high blood pressure and, and they would note the, the numbers that your blood pressure numbers throughout your medical records. Um, they may note that you've been having issues with snoring. I had a veteran who throughout his med service medical records, he had been going in for, you know, sleepiness during the day, snoring, and such, like we discussed before, um, lay statements from your spouse, from family members, from fellow service members um, with the, the snoring and such, um, your medical records, making sure you definitely get a sleep study for um, obstructive sleep apnea. You have to get a sleep study for that. And you can get that set up through the VA um, if needed. Um, and then if you're trying to get secondary service connection, um, I would definitely suggest getting a medical opinion or just having your doctor write something to say that um, you developed the sleep apnea first. And because of the sleep apnea, um, the research shows that there's an association between the two and therefore it developed hypertension. Okay, great. Anything else you want to add? Um, I would say that hypertension and sleep apnea are extremely common and they are associated with causing a tremendous amount of other conditions. So it's really important to review your medical records, talk with your doctor or an attorney to see if you qualify for any secondary conditions um, to these issues. Great advice. Thanks, Allie. We'll Thank be you. doing another video next, so we hope you'll join us again. But in the meantime, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to visit our website or call our office.